So should you give your toddlers milk? What about beyond? Let's finish this series on cow's milk protein intolerance by talking about slightly older kids. So in the end, my goal is to help you in the process of choosing the best things to feed your child for their health and development. Hi, I'm Dr. Amy. I'm a board certified pediatrician and the founder of Kinder Digital Pediatric Clinic. On this channel, I answer common questions from parents just like you. I go over the science behind the things we recommend, the things we know. We have an open dialogue about things that we don't know yet because there's a lot that medicine and science are still learning about. We'll cover topics from medicine to nutrition to lifestyle, mental health, parenting styles, all the things that go into helping a child be healthy, and flourish. So in the first two videos of this series, we first went over the science of cow's milk protein intolerance, what is actually the problem. Then we talked about if you are breastfeeding or giving formula to a baby, how to approach that if the baby has cow's milk protein intolerance or allergy. Now moving on, let's look at older kids and who might be reacting to it maybe in ways we don't even know. First of all, I just want to say I know it seems like there is a new food related rule or fat every single day. Fat, carbs, gluten, vegan, vegetarian. It seems like everything that is good one moment will become the bad food the next moment. And it can feel like, okay, so what are we supposed to eat? How can all these things be true? And if only some of them are true, then which ones? Now, even for doctors, this is not something that I was taught systematically in medical school in my training. And I'm beginning to find that we don't actually have a conclusive answer. So this is something that I have myself tried to learn about and experiment with over the years. And I've come to the conclusion that there's actually not one perfect way to eat for everybody. Our bodies are so unique, so different. There's no one size fits all solution. So I see it as our job to take care of our bodies by experimenting, staying in tune with how we really feel when we eat differently. And it's not gonna be a perfect formula right off the bat, but we get closer and closer to finding out what makes our bodies feel good. And the same goes for your kids. I think even at a young age, giving them this mindset can also help them stay in tune with their body and continue to explore which foods are best for their bodies. Now, there are some general scientific evidence-based rules, and that's my job to communicate them to you. And I see my job as helping you in this process to find what's best for you, but ultimately only you can be in charge of that. So that's my soapbox and I'll get off of it now and get back to dairy. But I do think it's important for me to share with you that that's my philosophy and the way I approach food and nutrition. Because so much of health is what we eat and how we take care of our bodies. If you wanna see more videos on food and diet and these topics, again, please leave me a comment and let me know that that's interesting to you. So again, the physiology part is that cow's milk proteins are bigger, bulkier, and they have a higher ratio of casein, which can be harder to digest, leading to inflammation. But some kids can really have, and adults can really have unlimited amounts of dairy and truly be fine. And that's why our bodies are so mysterious and it's so different for everyone. But then there are many other kids who are maybe quietly having inflammatory reactions to dairy that we have filed away as a normal part of childhood. And that's the not so obvious reactions. But first let's just quickly talk about something that is obvious, which is lactose intolerance. When I say kids who can't have dairy, that might be the first thing you think of. Now to break this down, milk, like all of our foods, are made of different components of nutrition. Most significantly, there's carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Now, lactose intolerance is actually talking about a reaction to the sugar part or the carbohydrate part of milk. They lack an enzyme to digest lactose, which is the name of the sugar in milk. Now, I say this is obvious because if you have lactose intolerance, you know it's going to happen right away when you eat dairy. Within 30 minutes, abdominal cramping, diarrhea, and then it's out of your system and you're done until the next time you eat dairy. So those are hard to miss because the symptoms are consistent, they're obvious, and they're right after you eat the dairy. So that's not what we're actually gonna focus on today. This whole series has been about cow's milk protein intolerance. So we're talking about the protein chains here. And it's less obvious because the symptoms are more chronic, meaning more long-term. And they can also be more unspecific. So instead of seeing something right away, you might be seeing accumulated long-term side effects over the years. Now in babies, sometimes it's more obvious. Their systems are smaller. The symptoms might show up more dramatically. They can have blood in the stool. We know that's not normal. But as kids get older, we tend to have this assumption that older kids, they grow out of cow's milk protein intolerance. That's a baby thing. 
And once they reach one year, one and a half, they can start drinking cow's milk, no problem. And this assumption is often because the older kids who do still react don't have those dramatic symptoms, but they might have low level chronic symptoms. For example, chronic constipation. Now in the West, we tend to think, oh, kids are supposed to be constipated. I don't think that's true. And in fact, it is not true of kids from many other parts of the world who have a different diet structure. Now, this is hard to address and I will probably do a whole video on constipation in the future because it's affected by so many things. The other components of diet, fiber intake, water intake, the gut biome, even stress, it all affects our gut. But you know what else affects it? chronic inflammation of the gut, which we can get from cow's milk protein intolerance. In fact, a consensus recommendation by pediatric gastroenterologists, those are the doctors that specialize in children's gut health, came out with a recommendation that when we're treating chronic constipation, if we're gonna do an elimination diet where we take away something from the diet and see if it improves, the first thing to take out is dairy. Not the last thing, but the first thing to try, meaning it has the most chance of being the problem. Now, even in children who do fine with dairy, having too much of it can lead to iron deficiency for several reasons. One, because drinking too much milk might mean they're eating less foods that have a lot of iron in them. And secondly, on a more chemical level, casein, that milk protein for which there's more of in cow's milk, that protein also has a high affinity for binding with iron, which then prevents it from being absorbed by our gut. Outside the gut, just as this can lead to early eczema in babies in their skin, it can also affect other organ systems. Dairy can be a very exacerbating factor for having a flare or having their symptoms worsen. And same with asthma, because they all belong in that atopic family of a chronic inflammatory disease. So you see, we have different names for all these things, and it makes it sound like, oh, those are all different diseases and conditions. They have nothing to do with each other. But the reality is everything is connected. And inflammation in the body can manifest in all of these ways and how severe it is tends to be on a spectrum. So I certainly don't think that every child and every adult there has to be dairy free. Again, like we said in the beginning, this is about finding what works for you. However, if your kid is dealing with some of these chronic inflammatory symptoms, just consider that dairy is an independent exacerbating factor, meaning having cow's milk protein by itself can make these things worse. And for my own patients, I'm right there with experimenting with them. Let's say they have eczema and sinusitis and they're always having phlegm. I would say, pick a day, let's give it four weeks without dairy and see what happens to those symptoms. This is the excitement of experimenting in real time with yourself. Because if nothing happens, nothing improves in four to six weeks, we know that wasn't it. Now, despite the evidence and what we understand about the physiology, it is still very rare for doctors and pediatricians to recommend this trial. One, because it is so hard. I've been there, I know how hard it is. But also because drinking milk and having dairy it's also very ingrained in our culture. And lastly, it's not something that affects everybody. So it can create this kind of confusion around how do we approach this? And also the next question becomes, okay, if we can't have dairy, we can't drink milk, what else is there? And to answer that, I think it's important to look back in history and think about why do we start having dairy in the first place? Why do we start drinking cow's milk? And the answer is found in the three nutrient components that we want from cow's milk, which are calcium, fat, and protein. In our ancestors' times, these elements are scarce and having them can often be tied to survival or being well-nourished. And in that context of their diet, it makes sense to take advantage of this source of abundant calcium and fat and protein. However, nowadays, in many parts of the world, we no longer have a scarcity of these nutrients. Of course, in some other parts of the world, that remains a problem. And in that context, we have to, again, reevaluate being well-nourished versus having these symptoms. But you can also argue that maybe in the developed world, there are also more sources of inflammation, whether from our diet or from our lives. And also because maybe we're focusing on them more because now that we live longer, we can see some of the long-term effects from them. So then our question really becomes, okay, so how do we get good sources of those three nutrients if a child is not supposed to have dairy? So the first important thing I think is calcium because fat and protein presumably are more abundant in other parts of a well-balanced diet. And this might be somewhat surprising, but in a lot of plant-based milks, there's actually more calcium per volume than cow's milk. Not in all of them, but in many of them. I'm gonna leave some links below to some brands of these plant-based milks that have a really good nutrition profile 
profile. I'll also leave some breakdowns of the numbers. How does it compare to cow's milk in calcium? And again, there are many brands out there trying to make the cleanest, healthiest versions of these as an alternative to cow's milk. Then for the fat and protein parts, of course, the most important thing is to eat a whole and varied balanced diet. And hopefully you're getting many good sources of fat and protein from that. The requirement for that changes a little bit depending on how old the child is. And in fact, if you wanna see an age-based diet recommendation video, please leave me a comment and let me know. So I just want you to see and be reassured that if your child is someone who does not do well with dairy, that they can definitely still be just as well nourished and have a whole and balanced diet that gives them all the nutrients they need to grow. And in fact, if your child really is having side effects from the dairy and you've switched alternatives, not only can they still get those nutrients, but you save them from a very powerful source of chronic inflammation in their body that have effects that we know about and other effects we probably don't even know about yet. And that's really the case for all of us, isn't it? And that's why it's important to keep the mind open, stay in tune with the body and figure out what works for us. So again, I encourage you to stay mindful of these symptoms. Talk to your pediatrician. And especially if your baby had cow's milk protein allergy, not just intolerance, but they had true antibody mediated allergy, the data shows it's much less likely for them to grow out of this. So there's a higher chance for them to always react to dairy. Again, I think it's a blessing that these days we do have the alternatives. So everyone can hopefully figure out what is the diet that makes them feel the best. Thank you so much for watching this video and for being here with us. If you feel like, hey, this might be me and my family, my kids and I might wanna give it a try, leave me a comment below so we can all cheer you on and we can support each other in the process. Again, I'm Dr. Amy and this channel is all about bringing you the highest quality pediatric health information in an open dialogue with a focus on practical advice. Until next time, I'll see you in the comment section below.